चल चाहिए 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 चल चाहिए 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 bro what are you doing uh you know this guy called salt bay that's not what i'm talking about are you using processed white salt um with aluminum based anti caking agents i think so and is that a non stick pan you're using yeah what's wrong with that nothing if you want to die what i'm trying to figure out which youtuber he called it from this time but you already know if you've seen the title and thumbnail Hi my name is Pranav and you're watching Sanses Do. Let's talk about Fetiwa. Pretty popular guy, 6 million followers. I've spoken about him on the channel before when I spoke about no fap and semen retention and what he said on the Bear by Sips podcast. Your actual uh, semen liquid does it get absorbed by the cell walls or something? Like what do you think? Ayurveda is very clear about the fact that it moves upwards and nourishes your cells, yeah, yeah. brain and the overall body as a content creator he is setting all the right boxes well produced videos super consistent uploads and he's not awkward at all in front of the camera but the content he makes is questionable at the very least now a friend of mine dr a made a video criticizing him and he got copyright striked so i know he doesn't like things being said against him so i'm going to try and not use his content much in this video so with that said let's begin when you're someone who's this big and people look up to you for honest advice the last thing they'd expect is a wealth of misinformation and uh, things presented with a striking lack of research that leads to fear mongering that's what i found in many of his videos he also tries to glorify ideas from india especially ancient india like ayurveda often at the expense of ideas from the west what he fails to understand is that an idea doesn't become good because of where it's from ideas are only good based on their own merit supported by good evidence this is something he fails to understand and presents a lot of questionable things as facts to his audience in fact you can play a drinking game while watching this video or any of my videos for that matter every time i say the word evidence you take a shot see how drunk you get by the end of the video on the second thought don't do that you might get liver poisoning anyway without further ado let's talk about the things he said starting with Let's start with this video. In it he talks about how non-stick and aluminum cookware are toxic potential health hazards causing even cancer. Right. Let's talk about non-stick first. Non-stick coating is made of something called PTFE or Teflon. On its own Teflon is safe to use because it's chemically non-reactive. In fact, that's what gives it its non-stick property. Even if you accidentally eat flakes of that coating, it will pass right through you and come out Uh, and you'll be unharmed the only danger with ptfe is that if you leave the empty pan on the burner and uh, it reaches temperatures about 350 degrees celsius temperatures that you will never reach normally during cooking then there are fumes produced which are toxic so don't heat an empty pan for no reason for normal cooking use it's perfectly safe but fetiwa calls ptfe toxic while providing no evidence for the same these two are coated with the same toxic ptfe only does is show a news article that says someone sued a non-stick cookware manufacturer over the death of his parents how is this evidence especially when nothing is proved in court and even if it were true What is toxic to birds is not necessarily toxic to humans. All this is is baseless fear mongering. One thing he says correctly here is that if you buy cheap non-stick cookware, it may contain PFOAs, which are known to be a health hazard. Just make sure when you buy non-stick pans, they are PFOA free. and you'll be completely safe. He also talks about how aluminum is a toxic metal and we should avoid cooking in aluminum cookware. While it is true that aluminum from these pots does leach into your food, guess what? It's completely within safe limits for healthy individuals. In fact, the US FDA has rendered aluminum cookware safe to use. People with kidney issues may have problems dealing with aluminum but for healthy individuals it's completely safe see how a little bit of research instead of reinforcing existing myths could have avoided this baseless fear mongering this more he says in this video he talks about how aluminum based anti caking agents which are added to salt are 
toxic with absolutely no evidence when a little bit of research will tell you that they're completely safe. This fear of chemicals is a running theme on his channel as I'm gonna show you. He has a video where he's looking at soaps available in the Indian market and he begins by saying that there are a lot of toxic chemicals in them. Let's see what they are. From strong detergent ingredients. It is a strong detergent, but what are you implying? Are you saying it's unsafe? I don't think so. Harmful alcohols. Harmful? Harmful how? Or my research says that propylene glycol is safe to use. To petroleum products. Not sure what he's calling a petroleum product here because what the arrow is pointing at is not a petroleum product. But why is it unsafe just because it's a petroleum product? You know the Vaseline that we apply on our skin? That's called petroleum jelly because it comes from petroleum and it's completely safe for the skin. To pesticides. Pesticides? Why would soaps have pesticides in them? And what this arrow is pointing at is not a pesticide and you guessed it, it's safe to use. In fact, all the things that he's pointed at so far are completely safe to use. His toothpaste video does the same thing, calls a lot of chemical ingredients unsafe without providing any evidence. Which makes you think, does he think every chemical is unsafe? There is a naturalistic fallacy at work here where you think natural things are safe and synthetic chemicals are unsafe. That's not true. Cancer is natural, snake bites are natural, poisonous berries are natural. Not all things that are natural are safe and not all things that are synthetic chemicals are unsafe. Their safety can only be determined by evidence. I appreciate that he encourages his audience to look through ingredient lists, but when he presents things as unsafe without providing evidence, and when you actually look at the evidence, he is often wrong. Isn't that irresponsible misinformation? The irresponsibility doesn't stop there, it gets much worse. And I'll show you as the video goes on. There are two videos of his where he's taking a bunch of traditional claims and just labeling them scientific or logical. This reads like a list of forwards that your least favorite uncle would send on the family WhatsApp group. Again, he provides no evidence for any of his claims. And it includes stuff like sleeping with your head to the north is bad for health. And he provides the same rationale involving the Earth's magnetic field, which I've already debunked in a previous video. I've said this in many of my videos, but I'll quote Carl's taken here and say extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Are you drunk yet? Oh, that's right. You are not drinking. You better not be. Before I get to his most irresponsible piece of content, I want to talk about some more misinformation that he has said in his videos, again, all presented with no evidence. Here he gives home remedies to alleviate menstrual period cramps. He also talks about how the menstrual cycle is linked with the cycle of the moon providing no evidence. I linked to a detailed study that analyzed 7.5 million menstrual cycle to see if there was a link with the cycle of the moon and there wasn't. In this video, he promotes a pseudoscientific practice called oil pulling, where if you goggle oil in your mouth for 20 minutes, it sucks up all the toxins in your body like a vacuum cleaner, while providing no evidence. This or any other form of detox or cleanse is a myth. You can't remove toxins from your body using any substance. Your liver and kidneys do that for you. He talks often about how gold jewelry and various other herbal concoctions boost your immunity. Immunity boosting is also a myth. All products labeled immunity booster are the ones that you should stay away from. They may not be harmful to your health, but they are harmful to your pockets if you're not careful. They're like those telemarketing products that claim to give you perfect abs when they don't do that at all. I'm now gonna talk about a video that when I saw the thumbnail, it pissed me off. This video is medical advice from someone who is medically unqualified. In it, he encourages people to discard medicines that their doctor gave them in favor of these alternatives, Ayurvedic alternatives that he recommends. He claims to have spoken to doctors and health experts and Ayurvedic experts to do this, but 
it would have been far better to have them in the actual video saying this. And he does all this because, let me guess, Ayurveda is safe and natural and has no side effects and modern medicines are toxic and full of harmful chemicals and should be banned, right? I can show you various studies and chemical analyses of Ayurvedic medicines that say otherwise and modern medicines have to undergo safety testing before they get approved. In the video, he has B-roll clips of him reading what he calls ancient texts. Instead of that, if he looks up actual evidence and presents this to his audience, maybe there wouldn't be so much misinformation in his videos. This is the ultimate form in which his naturalistic fallacy manifests itself, where he believes that Ayurveda is natural and so completely safe, which I've shown you is not the case. I've also made multiple other videos on Ayurveda and alternative medicines and the logical fallacies that make you conclude that they work. This video is him recommending these Ayurvedic meds for various symptoms and if it seems harmless, think again. People who watch his videos who may have serious diseases like dengue or malaria, he advises them to have his Ayurvedic recommendations. People, please go to your doctor for medical issues. I can't believe this video giving medical advice is still up on YouTube. There are medical channels that I know that don't give medical advice because they are run by doctors who know that each individual case has to be evaluated by a medical professional who looks at their symptoms before diagnosing them and prescribing them medicines. So they wouldn't give random blanket solutions like this video does for symptomatic relief. And there are more videos on Ayurveda on his channel, like this one where he prescribes the uh, time of day, the season, the optimal age for you to have sex and produce children. And the ancient text that he refers as the sources has a ton of misogyny and objectification of women in them. Maybe I'll get into more detail on that in a separate video, but for now I'll say that it says stupid like uh, if you have sex with younger girls, you will uh, you'll get stronger and when you have sex with older women, uh, you get weaker and you wither away. And plus these books only talk about sex advice for men because according to them, women are inhuman objects created on earth uh, for the pleasure of men and for creating babies. Just the pure misogyny of these verses is incredible. Anyway, I couldn't watch many more of his videos. By the time I watched just this much, I had had enough. And I know I haven't spoken about why Ayurveda is a pseudoscience here. I've done that in a separate video. You can go check it out. Honestly, his intentions seem to be in the right place and maybe he's not aware of all the misinformation he's spreading. He can make all the claims he wants as long as he backs them up with convincing evidence. In fact, if he looks at the evidence himself, he can avoid spreading all this misinformation. That's it for this video. You might also be interested in these videos. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, remember, science is do.